Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting visual effects tutorial. Now imagine for a moment you've got yourself a new version of Adobe After Effects, you followed along with some of my beginner tutorials and you started to create some really beautiful visual effects. But every now and then you come across these really weird problems that you just can't seem to figure out. You think to yourself, I followed that tutorial to a T and it's just not working. You may be scratching your head because you just can't find that button on your interface or you're trying to apply a mask and you end up with all of these weird shapes all over your screen. Maybe you're just trying to preview your composition and you get all of these weird glitches glitches or sometimes your entire screen just turns black and you have no idea what the hell is going on. Well, fret no more, in this tutorial I'm going to take the mystery out of some of the really common mistakes and problems that people come across when they start to use Adobe After Effects. Now, this is going to be a pretty basic tutorial. I will just assume that you have watched my full beginner tutorial series. If you have not watched it yet, click on this link up here in the top left hand corner and it will take you to the entire playlist. But enough of me talking, let's jump right into the tutorial. Here's a clip from my basic explosion tutorial. Now I've prepped this footage, there is already some explosion lighting and a cool little shockwave in the scene, but now let's talk about some of the common problems that people come across when they're starting to use Adobe After Effects. First, let's try to add a simple explosion into the scene. Let's go to the time position where we want the explosion to kick in, right about here, and let's drag one of the stock footage elements that you can download for free from Detonation Films into our composition. This one is called Fireball against Black 03 and let's drop this into our composition on top of our base footage. Let's drag this clip forward and trim down the beginning to cut out the Detonation Films logo at the start of the clip. And then let's position this explosion right between the boxes. Next let's change the blend mode over to Add to get rid of the black background. And here's already probably the most common questions I get on my channel ever. Where the hell is the mode button? I I can't even find the button where I can change the blend mode. Don't panic, Adobe After Effects has two sets of buttons that you can toggle between and the way to toggle between them is to click on the toggle switches and mode button at the bottom of the interface. Bam, there's a mode column, there's also the track mat option. Um, so you can toggle between these two. You can also press F4 on your keyboard, it'll do the exact same thing. And then we can change the blend mode over to add. Crisis averted and we've got the explosion composited reasonably well into our scene. If you want to get a little bit more fancy, you can actually click onto this header here and then select columns and add whichever columns you want into your current view. This way you can kind of customize the interface any way you want. Personally, I prefer not cluttering up my interface with too many controls at once and just toggle between the switches as I need. Now, the second most common problem that people have is regarding masks. Let's go to the beginning of the composition and let's just for fun clone myself so that you've got two copies of me walking towards the explosion. So right about here, let's duplicate the base footage. Let's shift this off a little bit so I'm a little bit further ahead. And if I lower the opacity of this layer, you can see there's now two Tobiases in the shot. But let's say we want to see both copies at once. I'll just reset the opacity of this layer back to 100%. Now let's select the rectangle tool and create a mask around this copy of me. Um, yeah, that didn't really do what I wanted to. What the hell? Um, I feel like I'm just creating shapes rather than masking myself out. Let's undo that. Let's try that again. What gives? I'm just creating shapes. I'm not applying masks. And yes, if you've used Adobe After Effects for a little while, you know exactly what I did wrong. What I did wrong is I did not have the layer that I wanted to apply the mask to select it. In order to mask out the layer, I have to select it first and then when I use one of the pen tools or the red angular tools or one of the shape tools, I will create a mask instead. So once again, let's undo that, unselect the layer and now whichever tool you use, you will actually create a shape on your screen. Let's undo that again. And similarly, if you select the layer that you want to apply the mask to and then use one of the masking tools, you will actually apply a mask onto this layer. Again, a very common beginner mistake, but really easy to solve and not a big drama. Now let's look at a problem that I didn't actually think people would ever run into, but it seems to happen surprisingly often. To show you what I mean, let's pretend we are again just trying to apply a mask. As before, let's ensure we select the layer first and then use the rectangle tool to create a mask around this copy of me. Um, hmm. Interesting. Um, the mask is applied to this layer, but for some reason I can't see the other layer. Everything's just black around, which is kind of weird. 
If I scrap forward, I can't even see the explosion. What, what the hell is going on? Now, for the very observant of you, you will have noticed that I actually double clicked on my layer. And what that did is it actually up here in my preview window, I've got a second panel open, which just has my current explosion base layer selected. My full composition is actually over here on the left in this other panel. So if you click on that, here you're back at your full composition. If you use the selection tool and you double click on any one layer, it will take you to a source view that only shows you that individual layer. So that might be why you can't see all of the other layers in your composition because you accidentally double clicked something and went into the individual preview for that layer. Now, since this is not going to be another cloning tutorial, I have one of those already. Let's delete the second layer again and let's do something completely different. Let's add a lightning into the scene right on top of the explosion because, you know, lightning and explosion, it's kind of like donuts and vanilla ice cream. They kind of just go together. In order to add a lightning, let's first add a new solid layer. Make sure the layer is set to solid black and let's call this one lightning. Hit OK. And then simply search for and apply the advanced lightning effect to the layer. And there's our lightning. Let's just tweak this a little bit so it's kind of shooting out of the ground into the sky right at the position where the explosion is. Because, you know, that's just very realistic. And let's change the blend mode over to add. Now, obviously, yes, there's other things wrong, like the lightning doesn't actually animate in any way, but don't worry about that for now. Let's just say we wanted to shorten this lighting so that it doesn't go all the way back up, but it just goes, you know, up to about here, up to the height of the explosion. So lightning layer selected because, you know, that's how you apply masks. Select the mask tool and let's draw a mask just around the bottom half of the lightning. Hmm, that didn't really work either, but I've got the mask on my lightning layer. I can see it right here. So everything's applied correctly, but I'm not quite sure what's going on. Let's quickly change the blend mode back to normal and let's enable in the advanced lighting the composite on original so you can actually see the solid layer that the lighting is painted on. And you can see the mask is actually properly applied to the layer but the lightning actually just goes outside of it. This has to do with the order in which After Effects applies masks and effects onto your layer and I've discussed this in the VFX vlog that I'm going to link down in the description below. Because the lightning is rendered after the masks have been applied to this layer, it's not bound by the area of the mask and it'll just go all over your layer. If you did want to confine the lightning to the area of this mask, you would either have to pre-compose the lightning or you would have to use a track mat. Again, because this was kind of starting to go in a silly direction anyways, let's delete the lightning layer. Now let's talk about something that seems to be a lot more common with the later versions of Adobe After Effects and that is glitches in your preview window. This can occur because After Effects actually saves preview frames for all of the different layers in your computer RAM and on your disk. When you're changing the effect parameters in your composition, any impacted preview frames that have been rendered and stored in your computer's memory or on the hard drive may get invalidated. This will then cause them to get re-rendered and update with the new effect settings. However, that doesn't always seem to work, especially with particular effects. Now, I've already prepared a layer here with which I can demonstrate this effect very easily. And this is just a bunch of particles that I created with the Red Giant Particular plugin. This plugin seems to be particularly susceptible to this type of glitching, but I've had it happen with all sorts of other things in Adobe After Effects, so it's a common problem and there's a common resolution. Let's play this effect back. All it is is just a bunch of particles being emitted right when the explosion hits. There's nothing fancy about it, but do notice that in my timeline window, I have a green bar above the frames that I just previewed. This means that Adobe After Effects has rendered and saved these preview frames in my computer's memory. You may also see a blue bar and that means that the preview frames have actually been written out to disk. Now let's reveal all of the keyframes on this layer and let's drag this one forward. These keyframes control the birth rate for the particle effect and by pulling this one further out, what I've done is there are now a massive amount of particles being emitted for quite a while. Now, I know this is pretty over the top, but I just want to illustrate the problem here. If I preview this now, what the hell? Can you see the glitch? At the beginning, there's tens of thousands of particles being emitted, but then it suddenly glitches and drops back to the previous frames. What has happened is that After Effects did not properly invalidate and re-render all of the frames that it had already rendered out and saved in my computer's memory. So how do we get around this problem? Well, you can actually go into the menu and under edit, you will find a purge option. And here you can say, 
you want to flush only your current memory or you want to flush all of your memory and your disk cache. So you're going to lose all of the already rendered preview files, but it is also going to force a re-render. So what's going to happen? See how the green bar vanished, meaning nothing has been previewed yet. And if we now go back and re-render this entire scene. Bam! Problem solved. So whenever you encounter some weird glitches while you're previewing your composition in Adobe After Effects, just go off and purge your RAM and purge your disk cache and it might fix the problem. For my next example, I won't be needing the particles anymore, so I'll just delete that layer. And let's do something pretty common and add some camera shake to this shot. Let's select all layers and pre-compose them. I'm going to call this one Explosion Comp and move all attributes into the new composition. Let's hit OK. And let's add some camera shake just where the explosion strikes. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. I'm explaining all of that in my explosion tutorial and I also have a separate camera shake tutorial that you can check out. Basically, I'm just going to apply a slider to my layer and then animate the slider value to jump from zero to around 50 when the explosion triggers and then taper off over time back to zero. Next, I want to add a little expression to the position property on my explosion layer. And for that, I'm going to alt click onto the stopwatch icon for the position. Again, I do have a tutorial on expressions that you can check out if you haven't seen these things before. And what I want to do is actually want to add a wiggle expression to shake the footage around a little bit just in time with the explosion. So in the expression editor, I'm going to type wiggle, open bracket, 10, comma, and then use the pick whip icon to select the value of my slider. Close the bracket and let's click outside of the expression editor to apply it. Hmm. Error in wiggle expression, but I've typed wiggle and it's wiggle, 10, comma, effect, and then the slider value. So that all seems fine. Well, not really. One of the common problems with expressions is that expressions are case sensitive. An uppercase letter is not the same as a lowercase letter. And if you're very observant again, you will notice that I've written wiggle with a capital W, which is incorrect. So if you make that a lowercase W, bam, there you go we now got the wiggle effect working properly. Also note that expressions often contain these little quoted pieces of text. These ones refer to layer names or effect names or property names within your composition. So when you're following along with the tutorial, make sure that you're using the exact same names. Otherwise, the same expressions will not work for you. If you're calling your effects, your layers or your properties something else, make sure you, that you adjust your expressions accordingly and use the right names for your parameters. Finally, the very last problem that people have, once you're done with your composition, you want to render it out. So let's add it to our render queue. Now let's change the output module to the one that I like to use, which is QuickTime H264 and open this one up. One of the biggest problems that people have when they're exporting from Adobe After Effects is that they don't know what settings to use and they end up with files that are two gigabytes in size for 20 seconds of a clip. And it, it's just crazy. Now, the problem comes from the fact that a lot of people aren't aware of what the different codecs actually do, and they leave this one on the default format, which is usually AVI. Now, AVI is frame by frame. It is by default uncompressed, which means every single pixel in your video will get saved independently, creating a pretty humongous video file. Now, some people have this misconception that they can make a full 1080p video without any loss of quality at a tiny size of like a couple of megabytes. That is totally unrealistic and won't happen, but you can bring it down by changing the format and changing the compression. The one that I usually like to use, I usually like to use QuickTime. And the other thing I like to do is I like to go into my format option, change the video codec to H.264 because that gives me pretty good quality at a reasonable size. And I usually like to lower the compression to somewhere around 50, 60, sometimes 70. My final video export for YouTube, I believe are actually at 80%, which tend to get quite big, but again, this will give you a smaller video file, but lower quality. This will give you a bigger video file, but at higher quality. So play around with it, export a couple of times and just see what works for you. Now I know there's lots of other questions and lots of other problems that people usually come across when they're using Adobe After Effects, but I'll wrap this up for now. If I end up getting a ton of questions for problems or issues that I haven't discussed in this or another video that is already on my channel, maybe I'll end up making a second part. And it's that easy. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. If you want to see more cool visual effects and filmmaking tutorials, make sure you subscribe to my channel and I would also greatly appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up, favorite it and share it with the world. 
If you want to get in contact or simply stay up to date with what is going on, you can also find and follow me on Facebook, Twitter or on Google+. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I will see you later.